One of a president's most important appointments is chairman of the Federal Reserve. Anna, what was your reaction when your husband was offered the Fed chairmanship? I burst into tears, <laughs> and they were not tears of joy. I'm pleased to see that Ben's wife, Anna, and his two children, Alyssa and Joel, are with us today. If only Anna Bernanke had known what lay ahead. Wall Street watched Washington with shock and fear. Just one year after Ben Bernanke became chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, the economic alarm bells started going off. A history-making 777-point nosedive. Now, a year after leaving the Fed behind, Bernanke is putting the crisis into perspective, his perspective. You described this last crisis as the worst in human history. Worse than the Depression? The financial crisis itself, the, the collapse of asset prices, the near uh, collapse of so many large financial institutions, in my view, was a worse crisis than even what we saw in 1929, 1930. The summer of 2008 saw panic across the globe. It was that bad? Well, if you look at the major financial firms, uh, you know, most of them either failed or came close to failing or needed some kind of help. Uh, and it would have taken, market, taken market, down the entire economy. It would have taken down. I mean, it did. The problem was that financial firms were increasingly putting their money into complex investments that many people hardly understood. Call now and ask for a no-cost refund. Many based on risky subprime mortgages. No one can do what Countrywide can. When the housing bubble burst and those mortgages started going under, the firm started to go under too. Lehman Brothers, a 158-year-old firm, filed for bankruptcy. Given the Fed's job to keep the economy stable, it all landed squarely on Bernanke's desk. The Fed will try to use a blowtorch to thaw the frozen credit markets. If it was the worst in human history, why didn't more experts like you see it coming? Well, we didn't. We understood part of it. We saw that there were problems in the housing sector. We saw there were developing problems in subprime mortgages. But we didn't see, what I think almost anybody didn't see, was the vulnerability of the financial system to those factors. Ben Bernanke was never the most obvious person to lead the Fed. He grew up in small town Dillon, South Carolina, where his father owned a pharmacy started by his father. It looks a lot smaller than it used to. Ben and his younger brother, yeah, Seth, who is now a lawyer, too, yeah. often visited their maternal grandparents those, in nearby Charlotte. Those, uh, Grandma and Grandpa's bedroom was right here. Right. And then the real action, of course, took place over here in the kitchen, where Grandma cooked all her wonderful specialties. Young Ben's specialty was numbers. He achieved almost perfect SAT scores, 1590 out of 1600, as his brother well remembers. That we haven't had areas where we were really competitive. That would have been bad news for me. Bernanke spent a lot of time on baseball, not playing it, but tracking the stats. His notebooks, yeah. they are jam-packed with all the players' names and all their different statistics. I remember looking at those things and saying, hey, you know, I just don't see the attraction. But, uh. When he was 11, Bernanke won the South Carolina State Spelling Bee, which earned him a trip to Washington, D.C. I made it to the finals, and the word they asked me was Edelweiss, which is a Swiss flower, which was the name of a song in the movie Sound of Music. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, exactly. Edelweiss. Unfortunately, Dillon, my hometown, did not have a theater. I had not seen the movie, so I had never heard of an Edelweiss, and I misspelled the flower. And so I, was, I, 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 didn't, I didn't win the National Spelling Bee. How do you spell Edelweiss? E-D-E-L-W-E-I-S-S. -S. I'll never <laughs> forget that word. Back in Charlotte, visiting his grandparents, there was something else he never forgot. I used to sit on that porch there with Grandma. She would tell me stories about the Depression. She lived in a town where they had a shoe factory that had shut down, and because there was no jobs, the children of the shoe manufacturers didn't have shoes. And I thought that would, didn't make any sense at all. And I remember getting interested in you know, how an economy can get messed up. <laughs> As an economics professor at Princeton, Bernanke studied the Depression, concluding that back then the Fed didn't do enough. And so with the economy getting messed up under Bernanke's watch, he was acutely aware of the potential devastation. He says the problem was that to save Main Street, he had to bail out Wall Street. There is still the perception out there that Congress and the Bush White House and you bailed out big banks at the expense of little people. Well, you know, I'm totally sympathetic 
that concern. And I have to say that when I would go outside and see a bumper sticker which said, where's my bailout, mm -hmm. I really understood that concern. And it was not something we wanted to do. But the reason we did it was not because we cared in any way about banks or their shareholders or their, even their employees. We cared because we knew that in a massive financial panic, if banks begin to fail in large numbers, as we saw in the Great Depression, the implications for the average guy in Main Street are going to be massive. The heat came from all sides. Bernanke saw the cartoons. Did you hear about the Fed? The online satires. So what qualifies him to run the Fed? I don't know, maybe the fact that he has a nice beard. And the digs from politicians. What, what was it that Rick Perry called you? Traitor or nearly a traitor. To play politics at this particular time in American history is almost treacherous or, or treasonous. But Bernanke believes firmly that his actions kept the recession from turning into a depression. Now, seven years later, with economic growth and employment up, Bernanke had a ready answer for high school students in Charlotte this month. The Fed had to do a lot of unpopular things, and they were necessary, absolutely necessary, and I think history is vindicating them already in the sense that the financial crisis was stopped and the economy is recovering. But what about the recovery at the bottom of the ladder? The gap between the rich and poor is growing. In fact, there's estimates that income inequality is at its widest since 1928. Why is that? Well, it's a very long-term trend. It is not something that just happened last week. It's not something that was caused by the recession. One explanation, not the only one, is that as our society becomes more globalized, you know, more highly technological, that people with lower skill levels are getting left out. Bernanke believes education is key, and that message is literally brought home in a program started by his wife, Anna. After growing frustrated during a career in education, she founded the Chance Academy to help urban kids who are homeschooled. The Bernankes are putting their money where their mouths are. This academy, you finance pretty much yourselves. Pretty much, right. We subsidize just about everybody. These days, Bernanke works primarily at the Brookings Institution, a Washington think tank. He and Anna have kept the same relatively modest townhouse near Capitol Hill. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, the most powerful man, some argue, in the world when it comes to the markets. Now you advise two hedge funds and you make a lot of money making speeches, but you live still pretty much the same life. Well, we, you know, this is the way we like to live. And, uh, you know, we enjoy our pleasures. You know, we still do the Sunday crossword puzzle together and walk the dog. This month, the financial world was watching to see if the Fed would unleash higher interest rates. <laughs> The glare the fell on current chair Janet Yellen, who decided to maintain to the near zero rates of the Bernanke the years. Ben Bernanke seems calls, perfectly so, happy uh, to let someone else take there. the heat. Do you miss being Fed chair? No, I, I really like being able to look in the newspaper, see a story about some kind of problem and say, gee, I hope somebody does something about that. <laughs> and that it's not your problem. It's not my problem anymore, no.